Okay, um, so Greg, thanks for spending some time with me this afternoon to no uh, talk about um, yeah the project that we're undertaking to to recruit some people for your team. Um, it'd be great just to learn a bit more about the opportunity and about the uh, the projects that you're, you're you're currently undertaking there at the city of Stonington. Um, and I guess where I want to start is that uh, I understand that the the vision for city of Stonington um, is to be a safe, inclusive, and creative city. Uh, one that celebrates its people, its history and culture, uh, and also embraces a healthy and sustainable way of life. Um, I just wondered if maybe you could share a bit more about that with us. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks for having me, Anton. Thank you so much for helping us uh, finding the right people for this project. When we came up with the council vision and the council plan, we were very cognizant that it was important to connect with our local community. So we created a, a people's panel 30 people across yep. our municipality that demonstrate the, the diversity that our municipality has. So that, that vision statement is very much an ambitious vision statement, uh, but it's being crafted by people who live, work and play and visit Stonington. So that's our true north. That's our centre. That's, that's where we need to align to. And uh, leading the customer and technology team here at Stonington, we're very cognizant that we have an important role to play in bringing that vision to life. Yeah. So it's really important to have those vision statements so we can connect people, jobs, what they do every day to the community. And that's the great thing of working in local government is that you have some really great ability to influence uh, people's lives and the way that they interact with our services. And, and that vision is just a great example of uh, what the community wants and how we can connect with it. Yeah, right. It's actually really getting to the nub of your stakeholders' needs there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is. And uh, stakeholders are an imp incredibly important part of the way that we uh, deliberately engage the community on what we build. Yeah. Uh, we're not a private company. We, our, our, our funding and all of our assets are publicly used and, and, and owned through particularly um, uh, the, the, the rates that they pass. So we, we have an obligation to continuously engage and inform and 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 provide these services in the best way that we possibly can and the customer technology team is is really there to help all of our team members at Stonington uh, be able to provide those services in the most efficient and effective way yeah right and the uh, and you mentioned you know the, the the published future of Stonington strategy um, which you know outlines that roadmap to achieve the vision um, and that has been through, as you mentioned, the, you know, the combination there with the community and with the council planning. I guess on a personal level, you know, what really excites you about the opportunity to be part of shaping this future? Well, uh, like I said before, is local government is the closest government entity to the people on the ground. Yeah. Uh, we consult, we listen to their voice, we interact with them. Uh, as a really great example, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic, we were there helping and running the aged care services. We were there trying to administer vaccines. We were there dealing with people's vulnerabilities, helping them through being connected, dispensing food parcels and being the voice at the end of the phone where they actually sometimes didn't know where to go. Yeah, so right. so uh, we bring the council vision to life. I dare say also their expectations and, and by serving that community. And in the customer and technology team, our role in that is to provide the tools, um, the, the infrastructure, the processes, uh, and, and the knowledge around how to make to do that most effectively. And I couldn't be any prouder to be part of that and to be able to influence that on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, fantastic. And you know, you've outlined there the way that the strategy um, you know, profiles the innovative digital technology is that opportunity to transform uh, the delivery of the council services. Um, maybe you could, you could outline you know, some, what some of those priorities look like for the digital transformation program. Yes, of course. So uh, we are embarking on a very ambitious transformation program. It's not just digital, but it's business and organization wide. I say that because there's always a technology component, of course. Yeah but it's not just about technology. It's about how we uh, can be a, a modern, um, effective and efficient organization uh, that really serves the community in the best possible way. And to do that, technology plays certainly a large role, but also how we create effective processes 
better policies uh, and, and providing better tools for our employees to have those more meaningful interactions. So the digital transformation or the transformation itself, uh, we've, we've called as One Stonington. Uh, that's our internal brand for that. And we really focus on five key areas. Uh, the first one is to fix the basics. We have obviously, uh, we have a, quite a large legacy of technology and process um, inefficiencies. So we need to get those basics right. And that creates those foundations for us to then build, you know, future processes, capabilities and technologies. Uh, the second main focus area is around tools. Uh, they you know, provide tools for our employees. And a lot of that has to do with ensuring that people are connected uh, wherever they are, they are connected to the organisation, whether it's with the appropriate equipment that is both safe and safeguards our data and information for our customers. Third one is data, data and insights. Yeah. So we're investing heavily on a single view of our customers, single view of our experiences, knowing our customers and ensuring that the data and insights that we generate can help us inform us with better decision making. Uh, the other two focus areas are around customer experience. So customer experience in way of providing uh, really sound and efficient processes so that people make it easy. So we make it easy for people to deal with council. Yeah. Right now, our processes are quite clunky. Uh, they, they, uh, we don't make it easy for people to deal with us. Um, and in three or four years' time, uh, it will be really easy to uh, pay your rates uh, register your animal and yeah. buy a ticket to chapel off chapel all in the palm of your hand. And to get to that point, we have a lot of work to do. The fifth uh, focus area in, in innovation is exactly that innovation and smart cities. And yeah. that's where we build a connected municipality, a connected community uh, with the use of internet of things and, and some really more sophisticated web 3.0 pieces Having said that, though, that's, that investment will need those other four focus areas to be up and running and at some level of maturity. Now, that all takes time. And, this, and the transformation which we're embarking on is really the first transformation for Stonington. It's, 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 it's the most meaningful investment in these areas of work for over 20 years. And we're under no illusion that it's going to be a very challenging uh, road ahead. Having said that, once those big blocks are in place regarding our customer and our core processes and systems, there isn't anything stopping us moving into the next phase of much more innovative technologies. Uh, but right now we do have to get the foundations in place and we are looking for the people who are willing to have the grit and the persistence in order for us to get there. Yeah, fantastic. And I guess um, a lot of that innovation or the ideas and the ideation around that will, will be stimulated through those first four phases. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. More and seeing opportunity and um, rather than just parking it, you know, it's actually collating that, that, that as you go through, which again, I think is um, really presents the excitement and the opportunity uh, through being part of that initial phase. It is. And look, Anton, when we're not, con we're not pouring concrete over the plan. Yeah. We're not saying this is the plan. This is what we're doing for the next four years and just put the blinkers on. I think that would be, um, uh, that wouldn't serve the community very well. So that's why you know, when we first started this journey, the investment in data and insights is actually really quite core to our voice of the customer program. And we're going to use that to continually engage with our community, check yeah. in with them to seeing whether or not we're creating the service processes to what they expect and to the service levels that they expect. If we don't do that, we could under or over invest in this program. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the value needs to come back to the community. We have to show that we've invested X amount of dollars and provided Y benefit for them, whether it's in better services, service levels, so doing things faster, more effectively, doing more with what we have, uh, and, and of course, positioning Stonington to take on additional services with, with little to no extra cost. Uh, we have a, quite a number of headwinds that are going to be caused, um, whether it be um, future pandemics and the impact that it will have on our balance sheet for sure. But uh, really, there's, there's more services that our community needs. Uh, there's more services that our state government needs us to do. And we just can't keep adding people. Yeah. Uh, we, we, and, and with the rate capping that we experience, it's legislative. Solid. It's really important that we um, uh, do things with the most efficient way. So, so we can keep the teams and we can deliver more with what we have.
Yeah, right. So it's a real fine balance, isn't it? As you, as you say, between, um, I kind of think a bit like the Goldilocks effect. You, you don't want to under deliver. You don't want to over deliver. You're just trying to get in that sweet spot. So it meets that kind of customer need, uh, improves the experience and makes it easier, as you say, to kind of, as a customer to do business with, uh, with local authority. Yeah, that's right. And and to do that, it's a lot about prioritisation. So the roles which we are recruiting for will be front and centre on grooming backlogs, prioritising the needs of our business, matching that with the customer needs, and really providing us with that tension point to say that, you know what, we, we don't need this gold-plated solution. Yeah. Um, you know, we can do it this way and quite innovatively. Uh, and and work with the customers on resetting maybe expectations or at least doing something a bit more innovative. Um, otherwise, the investment in the program will no doubt increase, and we just don't we won't have the money to do what we want to do. So, uh, very important roles these program managers and the PMO leads uh, because they really can help shape the priority of how we invest uh, and meet the customers' expectations. Yeah, absolutely, and I think. Um... <coughs> You know, beyond the, let's say the technical skills uh, and the experience uh, that you're looking for for, for people in this role, um, you know we know from from working with you that that people and values uh, and the culture at the city of, of Stonington is is absolutely critical. Um, so, what kind of strengths uh, do you value uh, when you're looking for people? Customer first mindset, number one. Yeah, particularly if you know we're on a, a journey of customer experience here in the council. No matter what job you do in customer and technology, you must be customer first. Uh, second is, I want to say innovative, but with a touch of pragmatism. So innovation is great. Being innovative in the way you <clears throat> deliver your program, the way that you seek solutions. But there has to be a degree of pragmatism around it, particularly in local government. So we've got to understand that people have to understand and appreciate local government as an entity, but not be afraid to push the envelope at the same time. Um, They have to be great communicators. They have to be incredibly good at managing, sorry, building and managing their relationships across the board, whether it's internally, whether it's with external parties, whether it's vendors, whether it's stakeholders or business representatives. Uh, And fourth is, uh, you mentioned before, Anton, in the previous chat, is is grit. The skill and the effort that you can bring um, and the, the, the effort and the resilience that you will need to um, pick yourself up. Uh, it's, these transformations aren't easy, uh, but they're incredibly rewarding. And, and the effort that the people can bring uh, to get to the finishing line is definitely a quality that we look out for as well. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. And I guess, look, finally, um, you know, in, from your perspective, you know, why, why do you see that these roles would appeal to the experienced professionals out there that you're looking to, uh, to recruit? Well, controversially, if you're tired of the private sector, and uh, I'll tell you a little story, is in my previous roles, it was all about cutting jobs. You know, improve this, cut FTE. Um, you know, without any kind of, I guess, meaningful emotional connection to it. I'd say that this job, these transformations are all about the emotional connection that we have with our community to create some really great services. And like I said in my earlier bit, it's the closest you're going to get to the community um, at, a, at, a, at a public level. And it is just tremendous to able to influence and to help maternal child health nurses to help the libraries and the librarians that we have, um, to help the um, the folks that go out and, and, and fix all of the roads and all the pipes and all the water and, and, and to, to be connected to something that is also connected to things like sustainability and, um, and our climate emergency action plan whilst doing the stuff that you love around technology and customer first work. So uh, that's the exciting bit. And um, that's the emotional connection that I have and many of my team have. And that's what will attract some really fantastic people to consider local government as a really great place to work. Notwithstanding, local government is going through a tremendous transformation into to itself. So the growth in transformation activity is, is, is through the roof and it's a really exciting time. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Greg, uh, for sharing what you have today.
Uh, I think it's been really great to, to bring the opportunity to life and to talk about the transformation that uh, you're going to be going through around the One Stonington. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to being able to share this with people and uh, to finding some great people to join your team. Fantastic. Thanks, Anton. Have a good one. Good to Thanks. see you. Cheers, Greg.